So I definitely think there's an advantage to making a lot of your sounds yourself in whatever synth that you have and whatever DAW you're using. And a big example of that would be 808 sounds, which are useful in a lot of different genres, not just hip hop, but a lot of people will sell sample packs that have a bunch of different 808s. But the reality is if you're using a sample, like an audio sample to trigger your 808 sound, you have to stretch that sample, that one audio file, when you hit the different pitches in your bass line. Whereas if you program it into a synth, you know, the MIDI is controlling a synthesizer to create that sound. So it's, it could tend to sound better and also give you tons of more flexibility with the sound design, right? So it's just good knowledge to have, and you can do it with virtually any synth, especially the stock ones. So here I have Ableton Live Drift, which comes with Ableton Live Light. So you don't need sweet or standard or light. I did a tutorial on Wavetable, which is part of Ableton Live uh, Suite. But if you have Ableton Live Light, you have Drift. And it has two oscillators, it has two envelopes, it has an LFO, it has more than enough things to make great sounds. So we can just start right there. I'll put on the screen a list of the things that kind of have to do with the 808 sound if you're programming it in a synth. So essentially you have, in my opinion, square and sine wave, low oscillators, a static filter taking off a lot of the high frequencies, tightening up the lows a little bit, and then your envelopes do different things. They're gonna be kind of blade shaped where we emphasize a long decay and a long release, no sustain. And of course it's a mono sound with very little modulation or anything like that. So it's actually a kind of a simple sound. It might not sound that way, but it's a very simple idea. You go over here to drift, we're in default mode. I'm gonna set this to square. We'll keep the sign. I'm gonna bring the um, octave range of both of these down and I'm gonna take off some of the volume on the square something like 19 would be pretty good and we're going to go over here to pitch mod we want the sound of the 808 to have sort of a pitch modulation meaning the moment i hit the note it dives down so we're going to have envelope 2 do that so we'll add some of that on right there and then we can go over here to our filter these are on by default so what this is doing is having envelope 2 also control the frequency of the filter i just want this off I don't want this doing anything because I want my filter, when I click on it, you can see it here. I want my filter to be static uh, so that it's more about the pitch and then it's, it kind of maintains its, its dark sounding profile and the frequency. Okay, and I'm just going to shave all the high frequencies off. So I'm going to come down here to 210, to 11, 200, somewhere around there and we can add on our resonance and high pass. Now the reason why I'm doing this is this kind of shapes the sound a little bit in the direction we want. And I do want to shave off the low frequencies. I'll bring this up to around 40-ish. Uh, and the reason why is because a lot of times when people put like a shelving EQ on the low end, it's sort of boosting the lows so much, especially like 20, 15 hertz and below, that's like mostly air that it's kind of out of control bass and then it can kind of mess up your your track because you try to put your music into the limiter when you're mastering the, the track and you can't get too much loudness because the bass is just overwhelming everything so i actually tend to shave some of it off it's not a straight line cut it's it's still letting uh, those low frequencies those ultra low frequencies through but it's tightening it up a little bit i find that helps a lot and then when we go to our envelopes, we have two different envelopes. And when I click on each region, you can see them here. Now, what I want to do with this one is I want to have an attack that's not right away, because if it's at zero, you might get sort of a clickiness kind of happening. So I want it somewhere around there. I want my decay actually pretty long because this is going to be when I tap on the note on the keyboard or I hit a brief little note on the MIDI piano roll, I want it to ring out. And I tend to turn the sustain all the way down and I have also a pretty long release. In fact, I could have the decay like all the way up to like 10, 11 seconds and the release up to like six. And this is where you're giving that whole like resonance profile, that sort of that long ringing out that you can hear. It's happening from there. And you can already kind of tell this is already sort of turning into a um, 808 sounding sound. And then if I go down here to this envelope, this is the one that we set earlier to the pitch mod. You're actually already hearing it, so you don't have to you know, go too crazy with these things, but it's gonna look sorta like this one, but this is for the amp. 
This is going to be for the pitch mod. And this one I keep really simple. I have the attack happen right away. And then I keep the decay somewhere around here. And I basically turn all these down. Right, so you can hear it's kind of ringing out. It's got a really brief pitch mod. It kind of dives down briefly. That gives it that sort of sound. And honestly, that's basically it. The big things with this is you want to have it be a mono sound. And I turn the mono thickness all the way up. And then you can also th turn on things like legato. Drift is also kind of cool because it, it adds a little bit of that analog randomness to the signal. And you can play around with glide and things like that. Um, the only other mod that I'll actually do is I'll just have press or actually velocity and I'll set that to the volume. So however hard I hit the keys will change um, the loudness of my 808. And I, I tend to like that, what that does to the sound because then my playing can be more expressive. Or if I just decide I want my 808 to be the same exact volume throughout the track, then just don't do that and it will be totally static. It will be mono. It can or cannot have legato if, if you want to slide. You know, that's legato is part of that. So yeah, I generally just set this area pretty simply. And now you should have a pretty classic sounding 808. And if you want to ring out longer, you just go over here to release and just turn it up. And it's cool because when you turn the mono thickness up, it tends to have a little more um, like a, a, well, a thickness. <laughs> so that really helps with the sound, obviously. And it's mono, so it's really set in the center, which helps to really kind of reinforce the sound of your music when you put this in your track. And uh, yeah, what else? Um, you can turn the sustain on envelope one up instead. So when you hold down the note on your MIDI keyboard, it does sustain indefinitely at a certain volume level, depending on how high you put it. So right now I'm holding down the key and it's sustaining indefinitely. And you might want that however you're programming the bass in your track, right? So, but that's basically it, you guys. Um, not a crazy patch to create, uh, but once you start here, you can add a lot more different things to it. In fact, I did an Ableton Live Drift preset folder that I put together for my Patreons. You can check that out in the link in the description below, but it's basically a bunch of different 808s that I used sort of this technique and some others to create different variations of the sound. But as long as you get this basic sound down, um, you could do this on any synth, by the way, you know, square and sine wave. That's the biggest thing. And then obviously just filtering it down and using your envelope to your advantage. That's the biggest thing. But yeah, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out my own presets. I hope you found this video useful. And if you'd like me to do a tutorial on basically any other synth, uh, it could be even Citrus in FL Studio or something like that, just let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It does so much to support the work I do on YouTube, you guys. You would not believe. And I'll see you on the next video. And as always, have fun making music.